one of the issues that uh, Kansas City, uh, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri voters decided on Tuesday overwhelmingly, they approved removing, removing Dr. Martin Luther King's name from one of the city's most historic boulevards. And it was only a year ago after the city council of Kansas City, Missouri, decided to rename the boulevard, the Paseo, that's what it's called, the Paseo, after Dr. King. Unofficial results showed the proposal to remove King's name received nearly 70% of the vote with just over 30% voting to retain King's name. Now, here's, here's what happens. The white people who engineered this would never, oh, God forbid, we're not racist. No, uh, uh, oh, whatever would make you think that. We even had some coloreds, oh, I'm sorry, we even have some um, uh, people of color in our committee to change it back from Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard to the Paseo. We, we do. We've got some colored, I'm sorry, we have some, how do you say it? We have some people of color on our committee. We, we, we do. The debate over the name of this 10-mile boulevard on the city's mostly black east side, that's called segregation, by the way, if you're keeping track of these terms, the debate began shortly after the council's decision back in January to rename the Paseo Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Civil rights leaders who pushed for the change celebrated when the street sign went up. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. They celebrated, believing they had finally won a decades-long battle to name a fucking street after Dr. King. A street. Not Dr. King on the back of a stallion raised up with a Confederate battle flag up his ass. No, no. Not a carving on Stone Mountain that shows Dr. King and two other civil rights icons marching off into... No, no. A fucking street. And what do the white people care anyway? It wasn't in their precious goddamn neighborhood. It was in the colored section of St. Louis, Missouri. But you know white people. Eh? I know white people. When the street was changed names from the Paseo to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard... It seemed to be the end of Kansas City's reputation as one of the largest U.S. cities in the country without a street named after Dr. King. But a group of residents intent on keeping the name The Paseo collected petitions to put the name change on the ballot, and they got the names they needed in April. Now, did the names come from just the neighborhood where the street went? Oh, fuck no. The petitions circulated all over St. Louis, Missouri, into the neighborhoods where the white folk would no more fucking go on the street. It could be named Jesus Christ's last uh, orgasm or something, and they still wouldn't have gone on it because it's in the colored section, don't you know? But those people decided to change the name from Dr. King back to the Paseo because, you know, history and shit, right? History. The campaign had been divisive with supporters of Dr. King's name accusing opponents of being racist, while supporters of the Paseo name say city leaders pushed the name change through without following proper procedures. 
and they ignored the Paseo's historic value. You filthy fucking whites, do you not think Dr. King has some historic value, you miserable shits? How do, how do, Kathy, how do I change races? Is there anything I can do to change? I'm so fucking sick of being in that group that does shit like this. Let me go on. This is from the Associated Press. Emotions reached a peak last Sunday when members of the Save the Paseo group staged a silent protest at a get-out-the-vote rally at a black church for people wanting to keep the king name. These white fuckers walked into the Paseo Baptist Church and stood along its two aisles. I, I, I mean, do you know what would have happened if black folk would have walked into a white church in a white neighborhood and stood along the aisles? Do you know what would have happened to the black folk? Every goddamn one of them would have been arrested. And most of them would have been clubbed to the fucking ground before they were arrested because this is St. Louis, Missouri. This is St. fucking Louis. One, trust me, I know, of the most racist goddamn cities in America, right across the river from East St. Louis, Illinois. Black Lives Matter? Tim Smith, the white boy who organized the protest, said it was designed to force the black Christian leaders who had mischaracterized the Save the Paseo group as racist to say it to our faces. The fucking audacity of white people. You know, I've had black folks say this to me. Malloy, you know, White people have more balls than should be allowed on, on any freak of nature. You folks get into our shit on a daily basis. And, and here they are. They come into, the, into a black church and start making demands. It's a wonder, it really is, that some of the black ministers there, the black congregants, didn't pull out their fucking guns and shoot these white people dead. Because, I mean, if you're in a black church and whites come in, they're probably coming in because they want to kill you while you're having prayer meeting. That happens frequently, you know. But the black folk didn't do that. They asked them to sit down. And Timmy Smith, who organized the protest, said, you say it to our faces that we're racist. <laughs> Timmy Smith said, quote, if tonight someone wants to characterize what we did as hostile, violent, or uncivil, it's a mischaracterization. Boy, he knows a big word there, doesn't he? It's a mischaracterization of what happened. We didn't say anything. We didn't do anything. We just stood did anyone invite you in, you pale-faced prick? This is where this shit starts. This, you know, uh, it, it, it's just astonishing. It's just, it's just unbelievable. In St. Louis fucking Missouri, how many black folk have been gunned down in the street by whites, by white cops in St. Louis, Missouri? So here's a church where they're holding a get-out-the-vote rally, and these white fuckers come marching in saying, you think we're racist? Say it to our face. The Reverend Vernon Howard, president of the Kansas City chapter of the SCLU, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC it should be, told the Associated Press that the King Street sign is a powerful symbol for everyone, but particularly for black children. Reverend Howard said, quote, I think that only if you're a black child growing up in the inner city, lacking the kind of resources, lacking the kinds of images and models for mentoring, modeling, vocation, and career, only if you're that child can you actually understand what that name on that sign can mean to a child in this community, end quote. But the white folks say, fuck you, Reverend Howard. 
Just fuck you and your black children. Fuck you. If the sign were taken down, Reverend Howard said, the reverse will be true. He said, quote, what people will wonder in their minds and hearts is why and how something so good, uplifting and edifying, how can something like that be taken away? End quote. But Diane Houston, a leader of the Save the Paseo group, said that the Paseo, quote, doesn't just mean something to one community in Kansas City. It means something to everyone in Kansas City. It holds a special place in so many people's hearts and memories. It's not just historical on paper. It's historical in people's memory. It's very important to Kansas City. And then she rested her case, and Timmy Smith rested his case, and the white folk uh, reversed their invasion of a black church. Were they there to worship their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? No, they weren't. Were they there to sing hymns with their black brothers? and si No, they weren't. Were they there to praise the Lord and pass the plate and take up a collection maybe for some homeless family out in front of them? No, they weren't. They were there to exercise their right as white people to storm the fuck into a black church and say, say it to our face that we're racist, Nick, our, you folks. Greetings, truth seekers. It's that time of year again. Time to help your humble and obedient podcaster keep it lit by keeping the lights on in the Malloy studio with a podcast pledge drive. All October, we are giving away freebies, goodies, and gifts as thank yous for subscribing or renewing your Malloy podcast at the Trump recession level reduced price of $49 a year. It's a different giveaway each week, True Seekers. Everything from an autographed copy of Mike's book, Colored Ice Cream, to my holiday baked goods. Already have a Malloy podcast? Well, it makes a great gift. And remember, podcast subscribers also get exclusive access to the weekend bonus shows, which might be hosted by Mike or by me. We even have a teen show coming up featuring Molly and her friends. Just visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe or renew today. Keep it lit.